Hello and welcome to Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, your host. Today we're going to go over just a few things. I'm going to continue with the name of this series being My Two Cents. And you're going to see a kind of shift from my negative to a little bit more positive over the next couple of videos. I have immersed myself in Star Citizen for the past 12 days. I have played on my main account, which is Batgirl, and I have played through many of my ships. I tried to pick a starter ship that I would like and wound up playing with my 315P quite a lot. I then spent one whole day, about four hours, playing on my alt account, and that is Cosmic Cat. On that account, I mainly, well, I, I have to say it this way, I played only the C8X Pisces. I did fly one route from one of the Lagrange points to one of the bases. I think it was Bajini Point. No, it was actually Port Alasar. And I, I, I just felt like I didn't need to do that. I wanted to get the experience of what it was going to be like for someone that was just starting out in the game. And I spent quite a long time playing in the C8X. By the time I was done with my days and days and days of playing, I started to realize I really liked the game. Yes, I know. Calling it a game is kind of a reach at this point. I know it's going to get better over time. I just am... I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I'm, I'm kind of surprised at myself for the negativity that came out of my mouth previous to today. So I'm going to talk about two things. I'm going to talk about the starter experience, and I'm going to talk about the ship that I've chosen to fly, which is a C8X, and why I feel that that's a very good ship to start off in early in the game. Since 3.9 has been released, it's no shock that there have been bugs. I was able to correct many of the bugs by clearing out my shaders folder inside the user folder of the Star Citizen Live install. After doing that, I also went over to my router, which I have an x router at this particular point in time, thinking about making an upgrade, but one of the key things that I was able to do there was to set up some kind of provisioning that, that enabled me to have at least 100 megs a second set aside for the computer I was playing from. After I did that, my bugs seemed to disappear. I should say my drops, my 30Ks and other disconnects seemed to drop to a fairly low number. Now, I'm not sure if that's what corrected it or CIG, who was working on the issues on the server side, had corrected them. So one way or another, my bugs had disappeared. I tried many different missions. I ran some cargo. Yes, there's only four SCU of cargo, but I wanted to run cargo, see if I can make money doing that. I ran a lot of boxes. I did some missions for people, and I did some beacons. Yes, I am not in the best ship. I do consider myself a slightly above average pilot, so I was able to get this ship to actually perform. And over that time, I was able to get up from the five or 7,000 um, UEC that I had on this account and to get up to a little bit over 100,000 by myself, a environmental suit, by myself, the multi-tool, the mining and the laser torch attachment, by myself, some armor, and buy a new power plant for this wonderful little ship right here. And I did that in the hours. I, I would figure about two to three hours a day of playing half of it. Or I should say more than half of it, two thirds of it on my main account with the different ships that I own on the Batgirl account. And then the rest of it right here inside of this particular ship, which is of course the C8X Pisces. I had a great time. There were some issues. I did get frustrated, but I do understand the game is in alpha. But I got to go to almost every moon, almost every 
one of the Lagrange points, almost every single one of the outposts on different parts of the Hurston moons and the Arcourt moons, and most of them in the Microtech moons. I've already been all over the Crusader moons forever, so that I didn't have to say, right? I did some smuggling, I did some trading, and in every part of the game, I had a great time. The frustrations are going to be there for people that don't understand that this is an alpha. But one thing I can say is, the, the visuals, and, and flying in a ship that definitely has the building blocks UI installed, like this one does, makes things a lot better. I am, I am renewed in my love of the game, and I am looking forward to the elements that they're looking to fix. And I can't wait for this game to become more playable for other people. For me right now, I think I'm going to continue my journey on my alt account and see how far I can get my C8X updated or upgraded and then see what ship I buy next. I'm almost certain that the next ship I buy is going to be a prospector because I miss mining. But I need to get to that point and I think I know how I'm going to do it. Not only did I play the game, but I started listening to a lot of other content creators in the Star Citizen community. Law of the West, Morphologist, and of course, Board Gamer. All of them offer some unique insight into the game and into the ships. And there's other people I listen to also. The Mac Brothers, I forget what the full name of their group is, but they're pretty amazing. And I listen to people's opinions on ships, and I can't believe how many of them centered it around combat. I am not a Care Bear. I can fight in almost any ship that's given to me in the Star Citizen universe. Pitted against an equal or better pilot, I know I'm going to lose inside of the ship that I chose as my starter. But my reasoning for choosing the C8X was mostly because it was in my hangar. And I had already played the Aurora LX forever. I didn't want to play on the free freelancer that is there for some strange reason. And I'm sure somebody will comment below why CIG gave people a free freelancer. I just wanted to start on something. And I looked at the C8X when I purchased it originally as LTI fodder. And for those of you that don't know that term, you buy a ship that has LTI with the, with the thought process being that when a better ship comes out down the line that may not have an LTI attached to it, you can purchase it, upgrade, well, purchase the upgrade, and thus have an LTI ship later on. The good news is that all ships are sold with LTI when they're first released. So that was probably not great thinking. So I started with the C8X expecting it to be not that great of a ship. But there were certain things in it that made me very happy. And one is the rear ramp gives me great access to walking onto the ship and doing box runs, doing messaging runs, and also doing some salvaging runs on some of the blown up caterpillars and starfarers that you have to run to. I find it a lot easier to get in and out of than a ship like uh, Mustang Beta or a ship like the 300 series, which are far better than this, by the way. My 315P blows this away, but it also costs 15 or 20 or $25 more than this. I bought this as the package, by the way, when it was a war bond when the Carrot came out. I started to fall in love with this ship when I went to a beacon and had to take on a bunch of pirates. They were all flying different ships. I had a couple of... And I know AI is not great yet. I know it's going to be updated later. But I was fighting against a caterpillar and two of the buccaneers and one cutlass. That much I remember. 
and I was able to take everything out but the caterpillar. Somebody else came out of the blue and blew up that caterpillar for me. And I don't know how they found me, why they were there, but they just happened to be there and take care of it for me. I'm very happy with the ship right now, and that was with base stats. To date, I've only updated the power plant, and that's the Breton. I see a lot of people are starting to use ballistic repeaters, like Gatling guns, like the Yellow Jackets on this ship. And I think that that will be a good upgrade for me, but it scares me. I know Yellow Jackets tear through a hull, at, but they don't tear through a shield very well. So I'm starting to think that maybe I want to have a mixed and, and I know that's bad. It's taboo. People don't like a mixed uh, install of weapons. But when I played past base games, it was always that energy weapon that I used for shields and that really high-end, hull-shredding device I used for, you know, weapon I used for shredding a hull, right? And usually those are going to be the repeaters. And I'm thinking I might do that here. But I think my next few upgrades are going to be the coolers and the shields, and then my last upgrades are going to be the weapons. I'll probably keep the two laser repeaters on the nose and put the two yellow jackets under the wings and see how that happens. If I fail, I'll just get the four yellow jackets and I'll be, I'll be great. I'll be happy. I'm happy with the C8X. I'm not going to tell people it's the best starter ship because it's not. But for me, it, it's actually doing well. But I do have some suggestions for it, and I'm going to get to those now. One of my biggest disappointments with this ship is that it looks a little bit unfinished on the inside. And I'm not specifically talking about the C8X, because I think this is perfect for a C8X, which is supposed to be an individual ship that you get and use as a starter craft. But when you're looking at the C8 that comes with the Carrick, I feel that the interior should be redesigned. On the left side or the right side should be scanning stations. There should be storage for weapons and other utilities that you might need as you go planet side. And there might need to be a rack or two because this is the ship that you're going to use to go to places that the Carrick can't get in and out of. I feel that the C8 that comes with the Carrick should be just a little bit different. But the C8X, I think, is perfect for what we have as a starter ship. It definitely falls right in line with the Mustang, the Aurora, the Reliant. Haven't seen the 100s yet. Can't wait to see those. And the, well, I, I guess that's it, right? That's the big starter ships for now. I'm very happy with this one so far. I've had a great time flying it, and I hope you all join me as I start to bring back my Twitch channel, which is just Star Citizen AA. So that will be twitch.tv forward slash Star Citizen AA. I think that's enough for now. I'm going to talk a little bit about some other more important things in my state of the game, but I think my two cents is going to be about my reactions, and state of the game is going to be about true news that's going on inside the universe. I'd like to try something different for this week. If you're playing the game, I'd like to hear a couple of quick reactions that you have to it right now. I know there are bugs, but I want to hear the positive things that you've been engaged in. Were there times that you actually were able to make friends? Maybe rescue somebody. Maybe come across something you haven't seen before. Maybe rekindled a new love for the game like I did. I'd like to hear that. I've already read through all the negative comments from my previous m videos and I think I've been attracting a lot of those people with the negativity I was spewing in the past. And I'd like to move past that. If you still have negative comments, leave them. I mean, people will read them. But I want to start seeing what people are actually doing in the verse. Well, if you like this video, please click that thumbs up button as it's really going to help me get more views on my channel because the algorithms are all, well, they're all tidied up to actually give credit to people who actually engage in those people that watch 
their videos and that's something I'm going to be doing with you. And if you do subscribe, please click the notification icon. It's the one that looks like the bell. That way you get notified of my future videos and you could watch all of them as they come out. I'd like to give a very special thanks to all my patrons. Without you, I wouldn't be able to keep going on. And because of you, I'm actually able to be in this wonderful new office, which is going to get the noise abatement tiles in here pretty soon, so I can improve my audio and make my videos and my streaming even better. And with that said, everybody, you all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon.